Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and we are back on track with the amplifier loudspeaker matching series about, um, about that. So basically, uh, Zoe, Zoe Nagy asked a question about Zobel networks. Uh, is that, uh, can we fix the impedance issues with Zobel networks? And, uh, that, and the impedance issues of loudspeakers, because uh, on my previous videos on in this series, I told mostly about impedance problems that when you have with loudspeakers and can they be fixed with Zobers. So the response for that is some of it can be fixed. And uh, how is that? So uh, just uh, let me see, does it want to change? Uh, let me see. Yes. It didn't want to change fast, but it did after all. So basically, this is just, this is not my thing. It's Wavecore's website. And I just Googled it up and found something that I can use to share with you. And they have a nice uh, figures and drawings. So basically, this is how a Zobel network looks like. You have here the driver, your tweeter, or a full range driver, and you add in parallel with your driver, resistor and a capacitor combination. And what it does is that it neutralizes the effect of the voice coil's self-inductance. Or actually that's what we want to approximate. It, it doesn't actually neutralize that effect, but it it, it, it is similar, it is complementary to that, and that's the net effect that you are seeing. So, when you look at the impedance here of the, the tweeter or full range driver, it looks like this. It has a self resonant frequency, and below that, the impedance drops down, and, and above that, the impedance drops down, and where it drops here, that's the impedance minima of the driver. And if you divide that by 0 0.8, then you get the nominal impedance of the loudspeaker that's using this driver. And, and you see that minima, where it is, that's where your driver is happiest working at and the least problem-free in operation. And then the impedance starts to rise because of the self-inductance of the voice coil. And, uh, and as it starts to rise, after a while, we are going to get into issues. And uh, at the far end, the issues will start to get dominated by the inductance of the voice coil, which will ultimately limit the high frequency extension of the driver. But before that, uh, the problems will start occurring because the the wavelength of the sound that the driver needs to produce is getting too short for the size of the driver to handle. So those two things are the ones that will ultimately limit the high frequency extension of your driver. And there's like a plenty of other things going on in the background, like motor strength, if it's not strong enough, it cannot produce a clean detail, but what is the distortion of the, or the handling of the membrane of your driver, that's a completely different question regards to the impedance of it. So that's a different tale for a different day. So, if we put in a Zobel network, that will create something like this. It won't create a perfect flat line, but it will flatten it out. And even if you just don't get this harsh rise, it will uh, be nicer. However, uh, is that solution a universal band-aid? No, it's not. In the case of an unruly tweeter, so if you have a tweeter, that, that, that gets really harsh and annoying. Or if you get a full range driver speaker and it has really annoying, harsh top end, then using a Zoba is probably your second best bet to improve it. I would say the first best bet is to use a high quality driver 
if you can do that then you have something that has issues and in that case just try to use it with a high quality amplifier and when you don't have that so you have a, a mid-low quality driver with a mid-low quality amplifier that's when you really need the Zobel network because uh, the the drivers by themselves usually are not that bad uh, what makes them sound truly bad and awful and just <coughs> is, <laughs> is the fact that they are driven by compromised amplifier. That's where your problems begin. And, uh, and uh, when you put a Zobel network there, it not only makes your driver smoother, but it kills off a lot of the harsh distortion coming from your power amplifier. So when you read the comments on my channel, Frank is commenting several times on the hard distortion. In, in French is the distortion du. So it's like uh, a form of distortion that is uh, perceived as a harsh distortion to the human ear and it's particularly nasty in the high end and, and just messes up the, the, uh, the frequencies beyond 10 kilohertz pretty badly. So when you add the Zobel network and you have a, a mid-level, mid to low level solid state amplifier, that will do really wonders. And even if you have a higher level solid state amplifier, a very high quality Zobel will be your friend. And, and I think Gabor, he, he has mentioned, he has commented that he is making high quality Zobos and, and helping uh, people to install them on their speakers and everyone is super happy with them. Uh, and uh, that, that's another application note for Zobel networks is that uh, if you have a low level loudspeaker, low level amplification like an LM chip driven amplifier that you built or you bought <laughs> uh, for very cheap then it's going to have a lot of hard distortion and uh, and and that hard distortion is the one that you perceive that happens with real music you can measure that same device with your oscilloscope and and just a plain sine wave and it is yeah measure it perfect with a sine wave it's like measuring a, a, a card pilot, a student driver, drive on, on, on the test field and yeah, he's great, you know, he could turn right, he could turn left, when the instructor asked him to brake, yeah, he braked, he could shift up to gear 2, back from gear 2 to gear 1, yeah, amazing, but that, that, that's, that's very different from driving in heavy traffic. The two, have, as the student, as, when you are a student driver, and you know that you, you ace the, the driving course when you go out into heavy traffic on, on a highway or in a city. That's the two completely different thing. And, and, and even though you felt comfortable, like, you know, like just taking, <laughs> swerving left and right, but out there it's like, man, it's like, how am I going to survive it? That, that's your first thought. And, and you will be just a klutz out there. And, and what you need to do is have like 10 years of driving experience and then you can be on the phone, eat your sandwich, maybe shave at the same time and, and it's still fine, no problem. But what they will measure you is like how you drive on the test course and that's what the audio measurements do. And, uh, and, and there the amp is not taxed, it's, it's asked to perform basic tasks. And and uh, when we ask amp amplifiers to perform basic tasks into a resistor load, not into a loudspeaker, into a resistor load, then the solid state amplifiers are doing a phenomenal job. But when they are asked to drive a true loudspeaker, not a resistor, and use true music, not a sine wave as the source, then they fare much poorer compared to driving the test course of that resistor with a sine wave. And the tube topology, and I'm not just saying tube topology, but uh, no negative feedback, short path, single-ended topology, the strength of it is driving the real thing. 
and when you ask them to drive a, a test course they are not not that good on that and you expect them that because they are mediocre on the test course the, in the real life they will just totally suck but no it's quite the other way around and and the fact that you look like how much power an amplifier can put into a resistor and how much power can it put into a real life loudspeaker when you look at solid state amplifiers they can put out less power into a loudspeaker compared to what they can put out into a resistor so when you read that your amplifier can put out 1000 watts into 2 ohms that amplifier can put out 1000 watts into a 2 ohms resistor into a 2 ohms loudspeaker load it can put out less and when you read that uh, an amp tube amplifier can put out 8 watts into an 8 ohms load then how much can it put out into a real loudspeaker well very few people have done uh, experimentation on that audio note was one of them they have a white paper on their website and they used one of their amplifiers driving one of their speakers and they examined three different amplifiers they experiment used one of their single ended amps two amps with 300 b amp uh, they used a, a push-pull tube amplifier and they used a solid-state amplifier and they compared these three very different topologies and they noticed that the uh, solid-state amplifier put out less than the rated wattage the uh, push-pull amplifier put out several times the rated wattage into, a real, into that real loudspeaker and their 300B that puts out Three, uh, sorry, eight watts into that eight ohm resistor into their loudspeaker put out 80 watts, 10 times the power that it was rated at. So that's why it's very critical that when you are looking at measurements uh, and ratings, you you make it clear in your mind that what you read in 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 the in the uh, data sheets in the measurements how speakers are specified they are specified with resistors as load which has absolutely nothing to do with real life but anyway i digress so now let's return back to the subject on hand the sober networks so that's why a sober network can be your friend because even though the measurement didn't of uh, of a resistor <laughs> of a sine wave didn't tell you anything what your amplifier would do with a loudspeaker with music but uh, your he hearing will confirm you that your Zobel network is absolutely necessary to clean up the highs and, and the problem that it fixes in most cases is not the problem of the rise of the impedance of the voice coil uh, because the rise of the impedance will do its, its phase shift and uh, will, will incur a loss of information and that loss of information you cannot undo by adding a, a capacitor resistor network it, it's just going to uh, lose additional bits of information but in an opposite phase so the, the distortion of the two the, the, the kind of distortion, what they do to the sound, they will cancel out each other but the information loss by one and the information loss by the other won't be cancelled out. So you will have even greater level of information loss when you have the Zobel in place. However, because you have cleaned up so much of the hard distortion of your amplifier's output in most cases you will experience this as a, as, as a, a revelation because that most of that hard distortion is gone and you are able to hear high frequencies coming out from your loudspeaker which before you have not heard because the hard distortion of your source of your amplifier was masquerading was masking the highest frequencies with distortion content 
and, and when I listen to lower level gear and when you listen to them and it seems wow this sounds really extended in the highs but but uh, when you listen to it that that's not natural that's not part of the music it's the distortion of, of the amplifier masquerading as high end and when you put on a zoba that 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 distortion is cut but you also notice that the that uh, the highs they don't extend anymore that much and that's because it's cutting from the information content so let's try it if my computer will let me go back to the powerpoint where are you here okay so let's try to yes so here we are so let's say in the case we take this loudspeaker and we put a zobel on it what it will do is it will uh, start to cut this part of the frequency range the highest frequencies and as you see this is a Bauer Wilkins 805D3 and it has a big peak at 10 kilohertz so if we would put a Zobel on then that would tame that 10 kilohertz region so it wouldn't sound as harsh uh, and of course if it has that 10 kilohertz region it's not just the speaker sounding harsh but if your amplifier has hard distortion at 10 kilohertz it will be extremely painful because your loudspeaker will bump it up like uh, 5 dB higher than the average output of the loudspeaker and in that if we tame it then we don't just tame that unruliness of the speaker but we also mitigate the effect that it does to the hard distortion coming from your amplifier however when we go higher in frequency let's say 20 kilohertz now the output has dropped tremendously by 20 kilohertz and if we add the zobo it will be even lower than that so ultimately uh, with the zobo it will not help us to to uh, to fix the very top of the high frequency and uh, what you might end up is add a zobo plus add a super tweeter or an ultrasonic tweeter that will help you to fill out that uh, 15 plus kilohertz region that now you realize is just not there at the level you want however another issue uh, the, the big issue with impedance occurs down there that region like below 200 hertz uh, we start to have some but mostly it's below like 60 hertz where, where it, it gets really painful and, and really taxing but that's time for another video to expand on that and uh, thank you for being here thank you for watching for educating yourself and keeping me company <laughs> virtually through the ethers of the internet and uh, have a wonderful day uh, bye bye